welcome to another episode of It's Our Time. Again, I'm your host, Eddie Deong Obo. And with me, I have a special guest, Wilson Loda. Thank you so for having me. Thank you me. for joining us today. So I'm going to go right into it. Tell us about yourself, what university you went to, <laughs> degree, where you grew up, all that. Well, my name is Wilson Loda. I uh, attended a really small school. It's called the College of Biblical Studies. A lot of people don't know about it, but basically what the College of Biblical Studies is, it is the only accredited, SACS accredited, and SACS is the body that accredits your Rice universities yeah. and U of H's and what have you. And uh, it's the only accredited Bible school, Bible college in the state of Texas. Okay. So I had the privilege of going there and I got my bachelor's degree from over there in Biblical Studies. The Bible is something I've always been passionate about. I figure, you know, what better do with your life than to go, you know, follow your passion and really get to know the book better. So that's where I went to school. Um, I went there for three years. I had some of my work done at Houston Community College, like mm -hmm. most people would do. And then I went over there. I completed my education over there, and uh, it's been great ever since. I've been in Houston for about 11 years. Okay. Yeah, this is going to be my eleventh year here, wow. and so this and it's basically home now, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just so I you're like a here. Houstonian now. Yeah, that's okay. that's what I tell everybody. <laughs> you know, it's like at some point I'd have been in Houston longer than I've been anywhere else in my whole life, so I might as well, you know. Might as well call it a little yeah, bit. Of home. Absolutely. So. Okay. So tell me, like, is biblical study something that you've always wanted to do? How did you choose this route? <laughs> well, so so it's. Uh, it's actually very funny how it happened because um, it was it was a journey. Mm -hmm. My my passion as a student growing up was always medicine. I just mm -hmm. I love the fact that I could I could do something to someone uh -huh. and they could see immediate change, right? Yeah, uh, and be able to affect their lives in a way that would be that would be positive and have a telling effect on them. Okay. So my journey in Houston started wanting to be you know a physician. That's what I always wanted to be. And when I got to um, a certain point in my college education, I had a really strange encounter. Mm -hmm. um, now, my love for medicine, actually, I'll start from, from my love for medicine and, okay. and how that came about, and then we'll go yeah, the other way. So my love for medicine actually started because um, I had, at one point in my life when I was born, I had a condition that required surgery at two weeks old. Wow. Yeah, so when I was barely two weeks old, they had to you know, take me in and cut me open and fix me up. And, you know, growing up as a child, I would have that scar and I would always look at it. And it just reminded me of of how how fulfilling it must have been for that man who I never met. Right, yeah. Who I may never meet, you know, to just have people all over the world that could really say, you know, somebody helped save my life, somebody helped change my life. Right. And so I just, I thought to myself, I mean, it'd be really nice to have something that I could do. Mm -hmm. and be able to impact people's lives where I may never see them again, but they'll know, hey, you know, somebody helped me get to this point, okay. you know, by, by affecting my health and changing the course of things for me. So that's how my love for medicine started. And I just went through, you know, school wanting to always do that. So there came a point in my life where uh, I started walking with the Lord, like, really seriously. Mm -hmm. And when that point came, at the young guy, I, I said to myself, you know what, this is what I'm going to be. I'm going to be a physician who loves the Lord. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going to I'm going to devote all of my attention to God and serve him and make my practice of medicine an expression of worship to God. Oh, okay. And and just really groom a family that, you know, that loves the Lord and and that's all I wanted. So one day I was just up Friday night I never forget and I had an encounter. It was just one of my I would say routine or regular pray at times. I would always, you know, just hang out with God at night. Okay, hang out and with Jesus. Okay. Exactly. That's that's <laughs> that's what it was. And I said to myself that day, you know, Lord, I just love you, and you know, here I am. Do with me what you will. And it was almost like I heard a voice say to me, "Is it going to be your way or my way?" Ooh. Okay. And then I said, "Okay, God, your way." But there's a problem there because um, I'm the first child of my family. And academically, I was I was good. I wasn't a bad student, but I wasn't average. I was you know above average. I wasn't like top of my class or anything, but okay. I was I was pretty close with those guys. And my mom and my dad knew what my intentions were, what I wanted to be a physician, and they supported it. So now I had to go explain to my 
African <laughs> parents. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go explain to my African parents that um, there was going to be a slight detour. Right. We're going to make this quick stop <laughs> at CBS, not any other big school like all the friends' children's <laughs> children would go to, but um, at CBS. And so I had to make that quick stop. And I dreaded that day. I mean, talk about just the longest <laughs> 30 seconds of my life, having to explain that to my parents. And I remember my mom was standing in front of her bedroom door. What did they say? I said to my mom, I said, hey, mom, I need to tell you something. And I made sure to keep my distance, obviously, <laughs> you know, just in case of reflexes, you know what I mean? Just, so I made sure to keep my distance. Right. And um, I said to her, I said, mom, um, I've been feeling really strongly that I need to go to Bible school. And she paused and she looked at me. And I said, here it comes. And I just, you know, kind of measured her arm, mm -hmm. make sure I was, you know, a little out of her, her reach. And she said, I've been wanting to tell you that for a while. Wow. And it was at that point I knew I was on track. And then I, I spoke to my dad also, and my dad said to me, I never forget, he said, son, let the will of God for your life be done. Wow. So I, 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 I want to thank God for the kind of support that I received from my parents to be able to allow me to be at a place where they saw what God had put in me and they didn't want to shape me or mold me according to what they felt like would be best for me. Yeah. But according to what God, you know, would have me do. So that's how my journey started. Um, it was a really interesting journey because a lot of people think Bible school is easy. <laughs> or Bible school is cheap. So what is like what does it entail? Okay. So I knew that question was coming, right? You know, so it say, is it is by Bible far <laughs> it is by far the most difficult education that I've had in my life. Wow. And 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 that's why when you when you when you go in circles like, you know, the academic part of Christianity, like Christian universities and things like that, mm -hmm. theology is called the queen of all the sciences. Right. Because when you study biology, you study nature. Right. When you study theology, you study God. Mm -hmm. And God made everything, so therefore every other study comes under the study of God, hence the name, the queen of the sciences. Now, when you study the Bible, there are issues that, are quite different from like math and physics. In math, when you learned as a two-year-old that two plus two was four, right. as a 64-year-old, it's always going to be four. Right. When you handle the Bible, it's not as clean-cut as that. I would so, so, so the study of it and, and the hard work that goes into it transcends that academic mental exercise. It is a study where you engage both mind and soul mm. in what you do. Because at the end of the day, when you come out of, of your education and, and when you go do biblical studies, there are different tracks that you can run on. You can right. do like Christian leadership, you mm -hmm. can do counseling, yeah. you can do pastoral ministries, you can do missions work. You can, it's a ton of stuff you can do with it. So you get to pick by your third year, your junior year, where you want to go. And I, I wanted pastoral ministries. So that's why I went. But when you study pastoral ministries, you get to study a little bit of counseling, a little bit of marriage and family, teenage you know, education, things like that. And in all of it, you get to deal with um, the, the most crucial part are the philosophical parts mm -hmm. of your education. I'll give you an example. Um, when we talk about things like uh, gender, mm. what is a man? What is a woman? Okay. Right? Uh, yeah. And, and, yeah. And we have to go by what God defines man and woman as. Okay, now, when I, when I study that, and I begin to look through the scriptures and how, uh, how God has dealt with men and how God has dealt with women. And I have to bring that now from the text of scripture right. and apply it in a practical sense to the people who I interact with and who come to church and who have questions. Now you're engaging their minds at right. a very real level with something that is so real and, and, and you're trying to make that application right. from text to people. Right within the context and right. it, it becomes really challenging at that point so <laughs> so okay i want you to kind of give some advice to a person who may have like that kind of they're on the brink of what do i do i've had this encounter with god maybe it's something similar or not maybe they heard a voice and they're like 
God, I don't, I don't know if this is the right path. I don't see any right. money in that. Or, right. You know, what, what would be some advice to encourage them to follow whatever that it, path is? You know, is? I, would, I would honestly tell that person, just kind of in retrospect, there's nothing that soothes a man's life and, and calms you down as, as knowing that you have followed what God has said to do. Uh -huh. Two reasons. Number one, you know you're walking in His will. Number two, it transfers the responsibility and the blame for the outcome of your life from you to Him. Uh -huh. And we all know that He never fails, right? right. Now, in my context, I, I am so appreciative, like I said earlier, you know, of my parents and how right. they, they supported me and backed me up. But that's not always the case for most people because exactly. we tend to think that except we're doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, engineer. or something. Right. Um, it, it, and it can quickly become an egotistical practice. It's right. all about the ego and the titles and what have you. And going to, to do what I did and having the backing of my parents, I would tell anybody, hey, first thing, you got to talk to your parents. Let them right. know. Okay. I don't care how old you are, it is always an easier journey when you have people going along on that journey with you who actually support you. Right. Um, that support you. that support goes a long way. There will be days when you, you have downtime and downturns and you're going to need somebody to pick you up. They're going to be there for you. Number two, don't be afraid. Okay. One of the things that I, I was concerned about, like legitimately concerned about, like you go on monster.com and indeed.com, you see a posting for a sales job or an engineering job right. or a nurse's job. You will never see anything about well, a pastor's job. Right? What does the resume look right. like? Where do I start? You know, like, like, where do I go apply? And, right. you know, what, what am I going to do with this piece of paper after I get it? You right. know? And it's a legitimate question, but mm -hmm. I, I, I always tell people, don't be afraid. And I, I, I believe we're going to talk a little bit later about my story after Bible school, but um, don't be afraid. You're walking with God. If you feel like God has called you to do, you know, something of that sort, then go ahead and do it. Now, if you don't feel like God has called you, don't just go do it for don't fun. It. It's, yeah. it's 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 going to quickly become an exercise in futility. So do something else. That's what I would say. You know, talk to your parents and be confident. Just go with what God's yeah. leading you to do, and you're going to be okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to be right back. We're going on a quick break and we'll be back with Mr. Wilson Loda. back with It's Our Time. Again, I'm your host, Edith Young Obo, and I'm with Mr. Wilson Loda. So, if you guys missed it before, he's kind of telling us his journey about biblical studies and how he went to school for that, how, you know, he had that encounter that kind of propelled him to follow that, and also the support of his family. So, I kind of want to switch gears to life after biblical studies. Are you using your degree? What else are you doing? Are you involved in anything else? <laughs> well, yes, I I am using my degree. Um, okay. It's it's probably the most useful education I've had in my life besides learning to read and write and, and understand, you know, things like that. Yeah. Because it's something that, that you do every day. You pray to God every day. You study the Bible every day. People ask you questions every day. Mm -hmm. And all of that training goes a long way, you know, to help and you answer those questions and and you just guidelines on how to live life and things of that sort yeah so I do use it a lot a matter a lot. of fact I, I okay. get to teach and preach at the church where I serve as an assistant pastor okay. so I, I I would say I'm using it quite a bit and what, what church is that it's called Christ Igniting the National Ministries um, okay it's a really nice church we're, we're a multinational church and uh, I've been there for almost three years right now, actually serving actively on that. Um, been there longer than that, but in a, like a service capacity for about three years now. Okay, okay. And outside of pastoral duties, do you do anything else outside of that? Yes, I, I uh, 
believe it or not, I am a, I'm a security advisor with the nation's largest security company. And wow. I've done that from 2014 until now. How did you get into that? Yeah, well, that seems that's pretty, a, yeah. like, selective. Yeah, yeah it is. It is, um, <laughs> it is uh, it's a pretty different field from what I went to school for. Right. So um, right about 2014, um, there were a series of events that happened that kind of necessitated me finding something else besides church work to do. And God was so gracious to, you know, just allow me to talk to a friend of mine who um, introduced me and said, hey, you know, just go put in an application over right. here and see what happens. And so I did. And uh, I was so fortunate and blessed to be accepted into the program where they would actually train you on what you need to do and how to go about it. Right. And that's how that journey started. And uh, it's it's been very rewarding. I've met so many people uh, doing what I do. And, and it's... Uh, it's it's a it's a it's a nice job to have. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, like, how can one get into that like industry or field? So, so it's uh it's it's pretty it's pretty easy actually. Um, you, you fill out the application. If you're selected, they teach you everything you need to know from A gotcha. to Z. Okay. So there's really no need for you to say, well, I'm not qualified. And people have that fear of saying, oh, I'm I'm a doctor, so therefore I must go work in the hospital. Right. I'm a banker, therefore I must go work in the bank. The fields out there that people don't necessarily care that you have a particular degree they just want to know that you have the sort of education that allows you to think critically right. and you could be a you know art major or whatever and you just go apply and you get accepted and then they'll take it from that point and teach you everything you need to know wow that's, yeah. i might need to go apply myself <laughs> yeah yeah it'd be, it'd be a good profession for someone like you you know yeah well, i love the fact that you're able to use your degree mm -hmm. but you're also able to venture out into other things and you're not limiting yourself to just being a pastor but you're also open to other avenues and other opportunities Absolutely. that are presented your way and I, I think that's a really big emphasis for people who maybe go to school or go through a training and they kind of feel like oh well I'm stuck in this and this is what I'm going to be doing forever I'm going to retire in this whereas nowadays you're seeing a lot of millennials in our age group our age demographic with multiple streams of income multiple multiple uh, types of careers going on at the same time so right. to see that with you it's like yeah yeah that's I, think, I think I think the, the most rewarding part of it is you know Traditionally, we understand the pastor to be somebody who ministers in a church. Right. Uh, but having the training that I have and being able to, because when I work, I work by appointment. Okay. And um, you so know, make I, sure y'all yeah. set an appointment with oh, Mr. Wilson. Well, I mean, you actually have to talk to somebody else, and they set you <laughs> up, and then I come. Okay. Uh, and, and then uh, whenever I show up, you know, I I have the privilege of taking the church to the people. Wow. Versus on Sunday when people come to church, so oh, evangelism. I, right, that's that's exactly what okay. it is. I get to go and uh, you know, I'm in about 300 homes every year. Wow. Yeah, it's more than most people visit in a lifetime. I do that, you know, on a slow year. I do 300 year, homes in one year wow. at least. Wow. So it's uh, I get to meet all kinds of people oh, every day. Walks of yeah. life. Okay. So is there anything coming up as far as your church is concerned or? Yes. Um, so one of the things we've been trying to do is I, I just, I feel very strongly about the the young people, especially African community. Um, I would say people who were raised in the African community, mm -hmm. uh, but not necessarily born in Africa or are from Africa. Um, there seems sometimes to be this, this sense of uh, dissatisfaction. Um, with the way things are being done and, and they really don't have a, a platform where they can come together and you know voice out their opinions and and possibly create solutions that would help them uh, just sort of integrate the ideas that they, they have developed into the already existing structure mm -hmm. within the African community and I would love to see all the young people you know 20 to 35 let's get together under one roof and, and really get a time of fellowship you know worship get a good word from the Lord and just have a platform where we can all get together and, and, and you know feel like we're connected and united but not just along the lines of being Africans or, or, right. or young people or whatever you know categorization you want to use but really saying you know what we are all people of the kingdom God's yeah. children yeah, yeah. so um, we're working on something along those lines here it's going to be at Christ Ignite International Ministries it's going to be sometime around spring break we still have all the details being finalized right now okay. and it's going to be the most amazing time ever okay. it's going to be a service just for us led by us from music to you know to 
performances mm -hmm. and, and, and poetry and all that fun stuff. It's all going to be all by us. So it's going to be amazing. Okay, so where can the people see you giving a sermon? <laughs> On wet days, oh my maybe God. they want to tune in or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh God! Yeah, that question always comes up. But I would say the easiest way would be just catch us on a Sunday. We're streaming live from Christ Ignite International Ministries. You can find okay. us on Facebook. Okay. That's the easiest way to catch us. Now, okay. if you were wanting something from me personally, uh, the easiest thing would be just you know search for my name, my first name, last name on Google. It's going to pull up, okay. um, you know, um, video clips and what have you. Uh, but that would be the easiest way. But I would I would say definitely on a Sunday, log on to you know Facebook and catch us on Christ Ignite and National Ministries, and uh, I'll be up there doing my thing. Be up there doing your thing. <laughs> or oh, the Lord's thing, right? The Lord's <laughs> thing, right? <laughs> so tell me, I want to kind of like lighten it up a little bit. What mm -hmm. is like a fun thing you like to do? Ah. Uh, it's not a hard question. I've, I've struggled. <laughs> you know, I've struggled with that all my life. What is the fun thing that I like to do? Believe it or not, I have my best moments when I'm by myself. Wow. But the one weird thing that I like to do um, is most people will tell you, hey, we saw Pastor Wilson at the store. I just like to walk around the mall sometimes. I like to look at things. It's weird, I know. Um, my favorite store is Marshalls. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I know like literally all the Marshalls locations and what they carry and which ones are good. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I. I You're a Marshall connoisseur. <laughs> well, I, what I what I make sure I don't take any money in there, you know. Window shop. No, it's retail therapy. Retail therapy. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's a window shop. Not it's window, retail therapy. Retail therapy, y'all. I'm corrected. <laughs> No, but I, I really I really enjoy walking around. Um, and part of it is because when I go to a store, uh -huh. uh, let's say I go to Best Buy, for example, right? I get to see, it's something with me and my environment, and I just, I like to see what's possible, you know, in my own home, and just looking at this and looking at that and saying, you know what, this could work well in my house. And it, it allows me sort of imagine things okay. and stretch my imagination a lot. Okay, and what is, what is um, your favorite quote or I guess scripture or whatever the case is that kind of like pushes you each day. I like a quote from Miles Monroe. Okay. He says, when the purpose of a thing is not understood, the abuse of that thing is inevitable. Wow. And so it, it really struck me. I heard that quote a long time ago and it just stuck with me because I feel like every single day when I wake up, I have to know what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm. Because when I don't understand what I'm supposed to be doing, it's inevitable that I'm going to abuse the privilege of life that I have. So I think purpose is just amazing, just knowing what it is you're supposed to be doing. I like that. Be purposeful, be yeah. intentional about what you're planning on doing. Yeah. That day, the next day, Absolutely. putting a plan together. I like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you again for watching another episode of It's Our Time. Again, I'm your host, Edidiong Obot, and I'm with special guest Wilson Loda. Thank you for you having me. You can catch us on It's Our Time talk show on Facebook as well as It's Our Time talk show on Instagram. So be sure to follow us. We'll have upcoming events, news, clips, things like that. And you can also find Christ Ignite International That's Ministries correct. on Facebook and, mm -hmm. you know, find I'm Mr. Pastor Wilson Loda giving a sermon at some point um, and any other upcoming activities they may have. Right. Again, thank you guys and we see you next time.